I'm back and today we are reviving a 1984 ZX Spectrum type-in game. Yes, a game that you could type in. Let's all turn on the tube. This is hot dog soup. First of all, welcome to all my new subscribers. I've got a subscriber counter now there. Thank you for subscribing. Today I'm making a new game. It was 1984, I was a young little lad and I had my own home computer, the ZX Spectrum by Sinclair. I've shown it in previous videos and I already made, well, I remade a, an old, old ZX Spectrum classic called Advanced Lawnmower Simulator. That was actually my first video. So, a type-in game. What is a type-in game? It's a game that you type in. Because in those days, if you wanted to have games on your home computer, you had to go to an app store. And the thing is, app stores didn't exist, the internet didn't exist, and apps didn't exist. Apps were basically called programs. And programs, yeah, you could type them in, or you could buy them in a computer shop, in an actual brick and mortar shop. You had to go to the city on your bicycle to get software. And another thing you could do was buy a book or a magazine. They printed programs and you could type them in, uh, copying from the book or the magazine, and then hope that it worked. Because the books always had printing errors and other stuff that could go wrong. It was a horrible experience, but that was the way we, we, got, we got programs for our machines. So, today I'm making a game called Dotty the Kangaroo. It was published in a magazine called Sinclair Programs in August or September of 1984. I had a copy of it. It was really a sort of exceptional that you could buy British magazines in the Netherlands. So I was really proud of it and I loved it and I, I read it from back to back like 20 times. And there were programs in it. I remember that my mother helped me a lot. She was sitting beside me reading the lines with a ruler underneath, and then I was typing, I was typing, and it really sped up the process. Now my mother was basically dictating to me. It was sort of pair programming avant la lettre. This magazine contained an amazing game. To me it was amazing. It's called Dotty the Kangaroo. It was made by Ian McTavish. He was 14 years old, here's a picture of him. And he was a pupil of Bristol Grammar School Shirehampton in Bristol. So, it's a game where you are a kangaroo and you have to jump across platforms to get to the exit. I spent weeks and weeks playing it. It had multiple levels. There were four levels, or four screens as they were called. It also had a hard mode. After you completed the four levels, you started again, but the game got harder. And all of these features fitted in a one-page basic program. And that was amazing. And I loved it so much. I loved it so much. And, and it was actually fun and cool to play. Today I'm recreating this game, putting it on the App Store, so everybody can now download it and play it 35 or 40 years after it was published. The first thing I did was create the graphics, because they're really simple 8x8 pixel graphics in just a single color. I could basically just grab them from the original game. And the next thing I wanted to do is the levels. I needed a level editor, which was the biggest problem that I had in my first game development video, which was about the advanced version of Advanced Lawnmower Simulator. It was called Advanced Advanced Lawnmower Simulator. <laughs> and in that video I made my own level editor, which is a lot of work. It's a ridiculous amount of work and it never is as good as standardized other level editors that already exist. And that was a big mistake because I wasted all my time on the level editor. So this time, for this basically fucking simple game that only has four levels, which I could program in code easily, I wanted to get the level editor correctly. I wanted to have a good one. So I used the most used 2D level editor in the world that there is and it's called Tiled. So I wanted to use that and I had to import the, the file format of it. I could find one project that, on GitHub that actually did this. They opened the TMX file format as it's called and uh, presented the game map on the screen. But I didn't really like it because it was kind of slow 
and it hogged memory. If you loaded a map with nothing in it, just an empty map file, it already used 100 megs of RAM. Why? Why? If I load a map with nothing, I want the memory to be practically nothing. So I thought, oh my God, am I gonna have to do this myself? Yes, I had to do it myself. So I spent a couple of weeks making a library to read those TMX maps. And I did it and it works and it's great. So that's fine, that's wonderful. And of course, it's not a waste of time. I'm not, I'm not doing this for Dotty the Kangaroo. I wanted to have this library in the first place so I can use it in all my other games and projects. So that was done. And now I'm actually starting to work on the game itself. And first thing is the jumping of the kangaroo. And then uh, after that worked, I started working on the controls. You use the keyboard to uh, go left and right. But of course, on mobile devices, I made it so you can tap the left and the right side of the screen. So I loaded the level, I added the sprite at the spawn point, and then I found out that it jumps too fast and it moves too fast. Also, the thing that bothers me is that it jumps uh, and moves smoothly, pixel per pixel, whereas in the original game, it jumped in character squares. So it's not really true to the original, so I had to change it. So once I did that, the player now actually moved correctly and exactly like in the original game. That is really wonderful and I was really happy with it. I, I immediately got that feeling back from 1984. Like, oh my God, this game is going to be awesome. Because in those days, when you typed in a typing game, you sometimes stopped halfway through and then ran it to see if it already worked or, or, or if you already saw something. Uh, and that was the whole fun of it. So I'm getting, as, as I speak, I'm getting that feeling back. Well, the player is now moving correctly and I added the detection mechanism if you jump on the red block. If you jump on the red block, the door will open and the opening door is basically just removing two of the blocks so that you can go through. So that was really easy and I also added the detection uh, to find out if you're beneath the water level uh, so that you could die. You could now really actually play the game. As soon as you can play, you, can <laughs> you just stop programming. You're just playing all day. You're just playing all day. You're no longer programming. You spent all your time playing. As soon as you can walk around, that's where all your time is wasted. So after a couple of weeks, I continued work and I implemented the, the scoreboard, the level number and the number of lives you have left. And actually I sent this game to a friend of mine. The first thing she said was, why does it say men at the top of the screen? Why, why? She didn't say, why is the kangaroo purple? <laughs> anyway, I kept it in because the original game said men, so I'm keeping it close to the original. I implemented the game over screen, which is just a little bit of text. And I also implemented the ending sequence after you finish the game. You get a congratulations message and then you go back to level one in hard mode. If you're in the hard mode, of course, the blocks will disappear underneath your feet. I implemented that. I thought, oh my God, this game is complete. This game is now complete. I remade a 35 year old game and I decided this is it. I'm going to put it in the app store. Dotty the Kangaroo from 1984 by Mr. Ian McTavish. If you know anybody from the Bristol area who is called Ian McTavish and who, <laughs> who was famous when he was 14 because his program was published in a magazine. Perhaps we can still find him. I don't have a lot of followers, 180, but you know, perhaps, perhaps maybe, maybe somebody's watching and we can find this guy because I love his game and I love him for that. This actually had a huge impact on my childhood because I started typing in this game, but I started editing it and modifying it to make more levels and to make the kangaroo jump higher. And those were my first steps into programming. That's where I learned programming with this game, Dotty the Kangaroo, 1984. Thank you, Mr. McTavish. I hope you're still alive. Of course, the game is now available for download for you for free in the App Store and in the Mac App Store. There's no ads, there's no tracking, there's 100% privacy. It does nothing. It doesn't even access the internet. It's just a little 35, 40 year old game. I'm the first one, I guess, to talk about it on the internet after all these years. So this is my contribution to the ZX Spectrum uh, programming and gaming retro scene. Thank you for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly uh, enjoyed it. I actually smiled for real and I loved it and I, I was really excited. So if you enjoyed it too, please leave a like, a comment, a subscribe, perhaps 180. I'm really, I'm so happy with 180. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's just, can I get to two? Yes, I think I can get to 200. Anywho, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. And download, download Dotty the Kangaroo.